Hey love bugs, welcome back to another Tarot Lover Reviews. Today we are taking a look at the Morgan Greer Tarot. Now if you've heard of this tarot deck or you have not heard of this tarot deck, hopefully this review and the flip through that comes after helps you to decide on whether or not this tarot deck is right for you. Now if you want to go straight to the flip through, feel free to look down in my description. I break down all of the suits into chapters to make it easier for you to locate exactly where you would like to start in the flip through. But right now we are going to talk about the packaging, we're going to talk about the guidebook, and we are going to talk about the cards. I'm talking card stock, card size, card texture, naming convention, and imagery. So if you are interested in all of the details, stick around. If not, feel free to head on over to the flip through. But first things first, let's take a look at the packaging. Now, I will tell you right now, it's a little scuffled. That is because I've had this tarot deck for a while, okay? So this is not how you are going to receive your tarot deck when you order it, okay? This has been loved. That is my disclaimer. <laughs> but here is the box. And I just need to make sure that I hold the box so that you guys can read each side there. And I believe, yep, got that side. Now, I believe, yep, this was published by U.S. Games Systems, Inc. So if you are interested in this tarot deck, you can definitely go to their website to find it or you can find it off, uh, off of Amazon. Um, I found this in my metaphysical shop. That's where I ended up purchasing it and there is a fun story regarding this tarot deck that I'll get into in a bit. But um, as typical tarot decks that come in this type of box, they all open the same way and that is the interior, pretty straightforward. And that is the packaging. Now, the guidebook. Whenever there is a tarot deck that's in this particular type of guide, uh, not in this type of guide, uh, guidebook, wow. Let's slow down for a second here. <laughs> now, whenever you have a tarot deck that comes in this type of box, see, this is what happens when I talk way too fast. Uh, tarot decks in this type of box. That's where I'm trying to get at. Uh, you can typically expect, I'm not going to say all the time because although I have not had a moment where I did not have a guidebook that was like this, but typically you can expect to find little white books as guidebooks in uh, um, tarot decks that come in this type of box. It's it's typical. It's It's the norm when it comes to, you know, tarot decks being in that type of box. Anyways, this is the guidebook. It is pretty, I mean, pretty straightforward, really. And it opens up kind of as a long piece here. And you do have a tarot spread in there for you, the Celtic cross. So at least you have something. If you are a brand new reader, you have a tarot spread that you can utilize with this, um, this tarot deck. Now, as far as the breakdown of the descriptions for each of the cards, you can expect to get a little bit of a description. There's not necessarily keywords. It's more like a, a one sentence description for the upright and reverse, okay? So that's what you can expect. You can kind of see, get an idea of, of how it looks there. But um, that gives you an idea of what you could expect. So if you're looking for more information, you're probably going to need to purchase a guidebook, a tarot guidebook um, that gives you more information in regards to each of the tarot cards, especially if you are new to tarot. Uh, but it just gives you a very basic description of each of those cards. Um, and as I mentioned, you do get that tarot spread here and it goes into, you know, what that, uh, what is, what that is about. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to talk too fast guys. I'm sorry, but uh, it breaks down all of the card positions and what they mean. But again, very helpful, very to the point um, that, doesn't bother me at all. Um, I don't really utilize the guidebooks as much anymore because I have a general idea of what 
um, each card already means. If I am called to look through the guidebook, then I'll definitely go through the guidebook. I find that a lot of the uh, tarot creators out there have a different spin or outlook on a particular tarot card and I enjoy reading their different views on them but when it comes to guidebooks that are in little white books uh, or come as little white books I can expect it's a very generic um, outlook on that particular card it there's nothing too in-depth about it when it comes to the little white books it's when you get a thicker book um, that you can expect to get a little bit more information from either the creator's uh, standpoint or the illustrator's standpoint, and then that's when it becomes a little bit more beneficial. Uh, but that is the guidebook. Let's talk about the cards. So this is what the backs of the cards look like. Really cute. I, I don't, I, at first I looked at it and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this, but for me, it actually works. One, you can't necessarily tell which way is upright or reversed, which is fantastic, especially if you read in reversals. There's nothing on the back of the card that would indicate that that particular card is in reverse or upright. So I love when a backing is very generic and well, I mean, you know what I mean. I don't necessarily mean like generic, but uh, created in a way to where you could not tell. You know what I mean? Whether it's one way or another. So that is the back. And as you can see, as far as the texture, it is a matte texture. So there's no gloss on it, which is fantastic for me. I love it when my cards do not have a gloss because then that means that the cards don't really slip around everywhere um, these move pretty well up against each other which is fantastic um, and it's not too too matte to where the cards stick together so that's fantastic uh, cardstock it is the standard tarot card size so again that's perfect cardstock uh, I would say um I would say this cardstock's probably in the Goldilocks zone. Now, what I mean by Goldilocks zone is I am using the example of if you were to shuffle in that riffle shuffle style or poker shuffle, bridge shuffle, however you want to call it. Um, when you're able to shuffle your deck that way and you have control of it and the way that you bend the cards when you go to shuffle there's not too much tension but there's just enough to where you can get a really clean shuffle between your cards that's what i compare it to and if i can do that with a bridge style or poker style shuffle is what i call it and i can control the cards fairly easily they don't slip everywhere they don't try to bend in on each other as i'm trying to to shuffle them together um, I consider that as a Goldilocks zone cardstock. It is a perfect cardstock. I have control over it. Now, I'm not saying that you have to shuffle in that manner. I will say this in every single uh, tarot review that I do. You do not have to shuffle in that riffle shuffle, poker shuffle, bridge shuffle, whatever you want to call it type of way. Uh, everyone does it differently. Everybody tends to do that under over method a lot, which is definitely um, acceptable as well. I mean, I, I shouldn't say necessarily acceptable. It's an option. You can do it however you want. If you want to put your tarot deck on a table and just swish it around and then put them back all together and then deal that way, you can do, definitely do it that way. There's no right or wrong way when it comes to shuffling your tarot deck. You do what you feel comfortable in doing. I change and alter how I shuffle a tarot deck depending on the deck that I'm using. If the tarot deck is way too thick in as far as cardstock, then I may not be able to do that bridge shuffle. I may have to do the under over method just to be able to shuffle my tarot deck. So there's no one way you have to shuffle your tarot decks. Now, I'm going to let that subject go because I'm trailing off. Anyways, so we've talked about the card stock, card texture, card size. Let's talk about the imagery and naming convention. Now, these 
when I go over the naming convention and the imagery, I am comparing these to the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. The reason being is because that is the most well known tarot deck out there, kind of a staple within the tarot deck world, right? So the guidebooks that are out there for sale, the other tarot decks that are out there, a lot of them will utilize imagery, inspiration from the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. So I want to make sure, especially for those who are just getting into tarot, I want to make sure that I mention these things because a lot of the new tarot readers out there will start off with a Rider Waite Smith tarot deck and may want to venture out and away from that imagery. They may want to venture out but still want to be close enough to where the imagery would still make sense based off of what they uh, the tarot deck that they learned from initially okay so a lot of what i'm going to go over in regards to the naming convention and imagery will be in comparison to that tarot deck so with that being said let's talk about the naming convention so the naming convention is a little bit different in this tarot deck i want to double check one thing because i know one suit changes okay so it's not all right so you have from a Rider Waite Smith perspective, you have uh, pentacles, cups, wands, and swords. Right, that is the the normal naming convention for the mi the minor arcana uh, suits. Right, in this particular tarot deck, it is different. You have pentacles, you have cups, but instead of wands, you have rods, R O D S. Okay, and then swords. Are swords so technically the wands are the only suit that changes to rods in this particular tarot deck uh, the major arcana are all the same so that doesn't change in this case and I'm just gonna check I want to double check and make sure that I am 100% correct but I'm pretty sure that I am yes I am okay uh, sometimes they all change the hang man to the hang one or the hang woman or, you know, so I just want to make sure. But yeah, I was, I was correct. So the only thing that really changed naming wise is the wands to rods. Uh, let's talk about the imagery. The imagery does not, I mean, does and does not follow the Rider Waite Smith imagery. It is done in the way of... Uh, the artist and their artist, their style in art. But I mean, still by looking at it, you know what it is. So a lot of it, I would, I would say about 90, 99, 95. I mean, it, it does pretty much follow the writer Waite Smith, but in the style of the artist. And it's, I've noticed it's a zoomed in perspective. It's not so how we're used to seeing it in the writer Waite Smith. It's closer up. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I just had the card. Okay, let's use this one, the Harrowfint, as an example. You are closer to the Harrowfint, whereas in the writer Waite Smith tarot deck, the Harrowfent is a little bit further back and then there's two people sitting before him or kneeling before the Harrowfent. So again, you can kind of get an idea that you are a lot closer up to the imagery than in the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. And the the imagery. So so you do get it is based off of um the Rider Waite Smith imagery with some some differences. So, like for example, uh, the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles looks like this instead of you know seeing an old man and his dogs and a family. So there will be some cards that don't follow the Rider Waite Smith imagery, but majority of the cards do follow um, subtle uh, similarities between the two. Okay, now the imagery in this tarot deck definitely gives me like 80s vibes, 
I don't know. It's just 70s, 80s vibes. Probably like 70s. 70s into 80s. Like this guy right here, the the um nine of cups. I I always feel like he's wearing bell bottoms. I don't know why. That's just me. But I mean that is that's another reason why I was pulled to this tarot deck. So the, here's the story behind this and I'll make it really, really quick. So um, I had a dream. Uh, my mom, who has passed, um, when I had this dream, she had already passed, had told me in my dream, hey, before you leave, because I was getting ready to walk out of this house, apartment, I don't know where I was, um, I was getting ready to leave and I just heard my mom saying, hey, don't forget your tarot deck. And I was like, oh yeah. I turn around and I start walking back to this desk and it's this tarot deck sitting on the desk. And I grab it and I take off and that's all I remember. When I woke up, I was like, I need this tarot deck. I've seen it before. It never really, I mean, I thought it was beautiful. Just looking at the, the front of the box, I thought it was beautiful, but it wasn't enough for me to, to pick up the tarot deck and buy it. After I had that dream, I bought it the next day. <laughs> I bought it the next day and I love the imagery. It definitely is something that I wouldn't have bought without assistance, but, um, just something about the imagery is beautiful, straight to the point. The cards are colorful, but not too, too bright to where it's a distraction. I mean, it is, I, I like it. It's very subtle and to the point. So, yeah. So that's the reason why I picked this tarot deck up. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. I love utilizing it. Um, it has a very sweet sense to it. Um, but then again, it's kind of like um, all of my tarot decks have always been straight to the point. Um, like they're going to, they're going to tell you what, what needs to be heard, what's, what needs to be told. Um, some are a little blunt about it. This one is just kind of like here you go. Like, I'm, I'm not here to judge. Here you go. If it, you've asked politely, here you go. That kind of thing, that kind of vibe. That's what I get from this tarot deck, at least from my perspective. But yeah, I hope this review has helped you in some way. And if it has, please leave a like and take a look at my channel to see if there are any other tarot decks that I've reviewed that you might be interested in taking a look at. If you don't find a tarot deck that you're interested in seeing a review on, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what that tarot deck is and I will take a look at it and see if I don't already have it and do a review. So yeah, without further ado, here is the flip through. Enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.